this video, we'll go through vertical braces and RISA connection. We're going to start here in RISA 3D with a three-dimensional uh, brace frame. And we can see here this is just a, a wide flange uh, brace frame. And I'm going to just show you the connection rules. So I've already gone ahead and assigned the connection rules at the end, ends of the beams and of the braces. Uh, connection rules are defined inside of the data entry toolbar connection rules spreadsheet. And you can see we have a diagonal brace, which is connection type diagonal vertical brace. Uh, so well, all we have to do here in RISA 3D is solve the model. So I'm going to go ahead and solve the batch solution. When you're in RISA 3D and you're taking your solution over to RISA connection, it's important to do either the, the batch solution or the single solution. So with the solution present, I can go ahead and take the, the director button at the top right corner. So I click on that and I have uh, RISA connection as an option. I'm going to click on RISA connection automatically going to launch RISA Connection for me in the background and we pop up here in RISA Connection. What I see here is that I've got a, uh, a, a 3D frame which is the name of my model in RISA 3D but then I also have a group so I'm going to click on that it's going to highlight the group and I see I have three connections with inside that group so those are the three vertical braces I defined in RISA 3D. We look at that uh, a little bit as a, as a group. We have uh, that group covers all three of those connections. So when we look at the properties, this is the group properties. Now some of these properties I can adjust on a group basis and some I'll need to go down into an individual basis. So the group, we can see a little bit of information. It tells us the loading. It varies obviously for these connections. It tells us some of the components. All of these are similar components so it gives us some of that information. This is all being controlled over on the RISA 3D side. If we look at the beam there, we can see that each one of them has a double angle, uh, clip, angle clip angle excuse me, connection with a bolted connection on one side uh, from the column fastening and then the beam fastening is welded. Now this is the beam to the column. So what I'll like to do here is I'm going to actually switch this to be both bolted and either uh, for both sides of the connection. And that automatically adjusts it for all three connections. We could go ahead and, and look down at farther at what the angle section was how many uh, column bolts you have, how many beam bolts you have, and you can make adjustments here on a group level. We're going to actually go ahead and adjust things individually. But if we look at the bottom brace, we have similar information. It tells us whether it's bolted and welded. And we're going to keep that type of a connection. It also gives us some of the, the uh, group functions here we can adjust. So what I'm going to do now is just click on one of these connections up here. You can either click on the connection itself or click on the name. I'll click on the name itself here, M12. This is the J end. And we'll look a little closer at this in three dimensions. So when you're in three dimensions, you can just click on the, on the, any of the elements or the components inside of that connection. And on the right side, you'll see it's jumping around. It's telling me what I'm clicking on. So now I'm clicking on the bottom brace. It's gonna, if I click on the actual brace itself, it'll show me that brace name there. I can click a little bit further like the connection uh, bolts. If I click on the bolts there, it's going to show me some of the bolt information. Uh, but one of the easiest ways, and we can see here, there's a general beam and bottom brace. And so there's a lot of information, but one of the easiest ways to adjust any of this information is to pop into the 2D view. So if I click on the tab 2D view, I can see here there's uh, some uh, dimensions listed on this. It gives me an ability, just like it did in 3D, to be able to click on any parts of this element. Uh, for me here, what I want to do is maybe adjust some of the number of bolts in this connection. So I have three bolts on top, and that seems pretty good, but maybe the bottom is a little excessive. I have four bolts, so what I might do is adjust that. By clicking that on that, I see that um, this opens up my bottom gusset column web bolts, and I can just see here from the bolts per row, I'm going to adjust that to be three versus the four that I had. And then I also maybe for these brace here, I'm going to click on the base bolts, and I can see it gives me the same type of information, bottom gusset brace bolts. I can adjust the bolts. I'm going to tell that to be um, only three there as well. So I'm going to change that from three to four, and all of a sudden it adjusts for me. What I also might do is this this uh, plate here is a little large. This gusset plate is a little large based on the three versus the four. So what I can do is maybe adjust this, maybe make it 14 inches, see if that works a little bit better, and this will automatically size for me. So I've got all this now set. And I can make, look at the front view. If there's anything I needed to adjust there, that looks pretty good. The bottom view, just more two-dimensional views. Um, but what I'll want to do now is just check this connection. I've made some changes. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to say solve current connections. And the, the mod this one single connection will be checked. 
and we can see on the right it tells me it's passing and it's at 0 0.4 which means that it's not uh, close to even being uh, completely there for the 1.0 unity check so I'm going to drop to the reports and double check what's going on so looks like here I am looking at the reports and it tells me some information uh, from that M12 here it tells me unity check was happening in low combination 4 I can control the low combinations here I'm just going to jump into that maximum low combination I can see where I got that high unity check not very high but high as I have and it tells me in the summary report which it tells me here that beam column connection beam gusset beam uh, connection I've got the bottom gusset column connection and the bottom gusset brace connection. Now these are summaries, so it's not going to be interactive here. It's just telling me the controlling limiting state and the maximum unity check that I find. It gives me some of the, uh, the forces and the rundown of the materials that I used for this, this connection. So there's four different connections that are actually in this one connection type. So to look at this a little closer, what I'll do is look at for example the beam column connection so I'm going to go up to the top and see a little bit more about what was happening in there so I'm going to click on beam column and now this gives me a breakdown of the individual checks that happened on this uh, one connection so what I see is I have that 44 percent here that's the blo beam block shear that's the one that was controlling and I can expand that, cal that calculation and see a little bit farther what happened here um, if there's any other ones I was interested in, maybe beam shear rupture, that one's another one that 40%. I can take a closer look and see what's happening on that one. Um, and I can see if there's any geometry issues, which there isn't. Uh, I would see fail happening if there's any problems in this connection. So I could then go through this one by one. Now this is the beam column connection. We also have all of the other types of connections broken out. So you can see the bottom gusset to beam very limit, uh, small little uh, weld connection, not very many calculations on that, but you've got the bottom gusset to column, a little bit larger, and uh, some more interesting ones here, bottom gusset to brace, that might be one that you might be interested in. Take a look at your Whitmore sections, uh, plate yield stress there, and you can look at farther that. The other ones you have in here is your members. Now, uh, these are being controlled from Risa 3D as they came in, but what you can do is this is nicer your report, so you can see a little bit farther about what was going into these calculations. Um, maybe you can understand this. If you need to uh, change maybe a K value, for example, if that's not uh, what you're using, you could adjust that over on the Risa 3D side and then bring that back over. Um, so if you go over to your components, you also get a breakdown of each type of uh, what was happening for the, the properties and, and the different uh, distances that you're using for your gussets as well as bolts and welds. They've got all that information. So what we want to do now is kind of take a look at the rest of the model. So we'll go back to our diagonal brace. And what I want to do is just run the entire project. I'm not going to make changes to the other connections, but I can see just leaving them the way they are, they all pass just fine and I've got them all passing and I can take a quick look at those reports and they all look just fine. So once I've designed all three connections, I will be able to save this model and then send it back to Risa 3D. So I'll go to File and I'll go to Export, Export Connection Results to Risa, push that and I will see that Risa 3D highlights at the bottom of my screen. I'm going to go back over to Risa 3D and there's a, a spreadsheet showing the results gives us a rundown of what member was connected to, what type of connection, if it passed or failed, the maximum unity check, and then the limiting state that was governing for that. So what we've, we can see on here is a spreadsheet, nice format, and that shows up on our results toolbar. But what we will also want to see is this graphically. So if I go to just where we saw those connection rules, we also have connection results. I'm going to click on that. And that will show us color-coded what passed, what failed, and if there was no results. So we see passing in, in the green showing us for those vertical braces. This concludes this video.